Can the Tories change their stripes? Because for the past few years, the Tories have been trying to look like, well, not Tories. And I'm not even talking about the fact that they've betrayed the values of their core supporters by being the Conservative and Unionist party that split the union via Brexit, or the party that's sensible and careful with the nation's finances that actively pursued a no-deal Brexit, or the party of individual liberty and free speech that's now banning protests. I mean that it seems like they're trying to look like lefties, or at least moderates. For example, during the pandemic, Chancellor Rishi Sunak was effectively paying people's wages via the furlough scheme. And on climate, they've set net zero carbon emissions targets and they're banning the sale of new petrol cars by 2030. They've also announced plans to address regional inequality and they've commissioned a report into institutional racism. And some of that will have a positive effect, so maybe a tiger can change its stripes. But as a great philosopher once said, The problem with putting your foot on a tiger's neck is you could never let it up. The moment they feel they can get away with it, the Tories go full Tory, but they can't do it all the time because the public anger would be too much for even them to handle. Can you imagine if they'd just not done a furlough scheme? The Tories know that the millions of people who would have been immediately unemployed wouldn't have just sat quietly at home while their children starved. But we know what their default settings are. Boris Johnson and our cute and cuddly Chancellor Rishi Sunak have always voted to lower welfare benefits and against increasing sick pay. So when you look at the fact that so many people couldn't afford to self-isolate because 97 quid a week isn't enough to live on, and the 3 million self-employed people who went without financial support for a year, and that when money was needed for social care, instead of increasing income tax for the super rich, they went with a national insurance rise which hurts working class people more, it's clear that even with a boot on its neck, that tiger is still trying to scratch us because that's what its instincts tell it to do. And sometimes they can't even hide the Tory. This was the reason Boris Johnson gave for scrapping the extra 20 quid a week on universal credit, which has been an absolute lifeline to the poorest in society. My strong preference is for people uh, to see their wages rise uh, through their efforts rather than uh, through uh, taxation of other people put into their uh, into their pay packets and uh, rather than uh, than welfare translation the government doesn't need to support poor people by taxing the rich because everyone will be fine as long as they put in effort which is the traditional tory line of poor people are just lazy which coming from a millionaire born into a family of millionaires is fucking disgusting so even though the tories might try to rebrand themselves as a party of the working class every now and then <laughs> Look at their levelling up agenda. Honestly, that's the only good thing to come from Brexit, a recognition of the anger across the country that London is treated as the sole land of opportunity in the UK, because that helps nobody. It raises prices in London, which makes poverty worse there, and makes it harder for people in the rest of the country to escape poverty. But we all remember when those northern mayors like Andy Burnham here in Manchester were fighting to get the money to pay people's furlough, and the Tories simply refused. Until, of course, London followed Manchester into tier two and needed furlough support as well. But that's exactly what you'd expect from somebody who once said, the pound spent in Croydon is far more a value to the country from strict utilitarian calculus than a, a pound spent in, in Strathclyde. At every step, no matter how much they try to hide it, they show who they really are. They refused to provide school meals to disadvantaged kids until Marcus Rashford put his boot on their neck. They were willing to use an A-level algorithm that took the best grades from disadvantaged kids and gave them to richer kids until young people across the UK put their boot on their neck. And even when they say they're going to do the right thing, the results don't match up. Like announcing an inquiry into systemic racism, which leads to a report that describes slavery like a cultural exchange in which the United Nations says normalizes white supremacy. Or saying you're taking climate change seriously while sacrificing our trade with Europe so we can import Australian beef from the other side of the planet and removing the climate change conditions from the proposed deal with them. So even when the Tories are doing things for the people, we have no reason to trust that they couldn't do more or better because we know that their natural default is to give us as little as possible. For example, we know that the Tories used £156 million of taxpayer money to buy protective equipment for NHS staff from a company company recently set up by the advisor of a Tory minister and that PPE turned out to be defective. The problem is we've had Tory governments for 46 of the last 76 years and as a result we've developed the weird Stockholm syndrome gratitude to them because we've had to rely on them for everything especially this last year even though the majority has voted to escape them in almost every election since the Second World War. But the facts are the UK had the worst economic recession of any G7 country and the highest excess death rate of any country in Europe during the first wave. So we know that a different government could have done much better. It comes down to trust. We shouldn't just be able to trust that the government won't bite us the moment we take our foot off its neck. We should be able to trust that they'll continue to work in our interest to the best of their ability. So the question is, do you trust the Tories?